Heavenly Father, we have learned to trust in you. Whether we find ourselves on a mountain top or on a valley, dear Father, we have learned to trust in you. And we know that if we never had a problem, we would never know that you can solve it. Therefore, Lord, for the problems that we have gone through and you have solved them, do you receive honor and receive praise. Father, minister to us in a language we can understand, for this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. We may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for coming. We are so glad that you came. And thank you, worship team, for ministering uh, with me today. May the Lord bless you so, so much. We, for, for, for this service, we've been doing a series. So in the first service I spoke and I was in this series, uh, the, the fifth, the fifth um, part of my sharing, and I thought if I give them all the history, I would take too long. So I just jumped into and I shared the word of the Lord. What I want to share today is, my, my, my topic is honoring God in hard times or honoring God through it all. Um, because there, was, there will be situations and circumstances that you and I will find ourselves and we'll have to honor God through it all. In Isaiah 40, where we, 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 we read, I've, I've kept on going back, Isaiah 40, and looking at the, the various uh, scriptures there. You, you know, God is trying to tell Judah something. Verse 22, he says, He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshopper, where he is seated. He stretched out the heavens like a canopy. God is the one in charge. Spread them out like a tent to live in. So we are living in the mercy and the provision of God. And it is him who brings princes to naught. In verse 27, he's asking Judah, why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Then he's asking Judah, do you not know? Because that is critical. Do you not know? Do you know God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Have you not even been to people that have God has ministered to them? Have you not heard? What have you not heard and what don't you know? That the everlasting God, the Lord, creator of the ends of the earth, he neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Now that is critical for us. If we are going to mount up with wings, we have to learn to honor God through it all, whatever situation we find ourselves. You see, there were three friends and they were living in a pond or in a place where there was water. But the, that pond of water was running dry. These three friends, one was a frog and two were ducks. Now, when, when it, it almost dried up, and because they used to be friends, the three of them used to play around, they thought, what are we going to do? So the two ducks agreed, we are going to hold a stick with our mouth. And then the frog with its mouth is going to hold to the stick. And then we'll fly to another pond where there is water. Those are friends, aren't they? I need those kind of friends. Wakiona suezi wananipatia mahali pakuji. So the, 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 the ducks were flying. And they passed it by because they don't go like jumbo jets. They, 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 they went above farmers and the farmers were asking, hey, look at that. That's a great, that, that's a great thing. We have never seen it. Then they, they asked, whose idea was it? They are asking. Then the frog decided to tell the farmers. It opens its mouth 
and says, I. But that was the end of it. Never forget. Never, ever forget. Ni mungu wa mekuinua. Sio? Usisahau watu, unataka kuacha grip ya mungu ili uweze kusema. So whatever situation and circumstance we find ourselves, we ought in that situation to honor him, even honoring God in hard times. Honoring God in hard times. I want to read the passage for our sharing today, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6 to 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 to 11. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in other vessel, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. For we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Verse 12. Verse 12. Is it verse 11? That is the last, the last verse manifested in our mortal flesh. At the time Paul is writing this, he is being severely attacked his enemies have attacked his credibility. Are you an apostle from where? They have attacked his ability to communicate. Wewe unakigugumizi. Wewe uwezi kuongea vizuri. They have attacked his appearance. Ata unasura. And you know, Paul is not defending himself. And you can look at the defense that Paul is giving. He's not like defending and like you and I, every time we are challenged or something happens, we are looking for an answer. We want, actually, I said this in the first service. One of the challenges that I found, whether it is in my home or in your home or, or colleagues or other bishops, is that many times in a conversation, people don't listen to each other. They are waiting to say something. If somebody is talking about Kwenda nakuru. So if I'm talking to Pamela and I want to tell her, Kwenda nakuru and I start. Pamela is now started thinking about nakuru. She is not waiting for me to finish. She wants also to tell me there is another way to nakuru. Uduru. Uko kenagofu. Unapita uko karuga. Sekuna uko. Naenda ya uko. Because many people don't listen. They are trying to impress one another. It's like uh, I say it's like, like, like children. Children, boys, two of them were talking to each other. One says, my father is so fast. He can go fast than a pujo. Oh, the other one said, you don't know my father. You have no idea. My father can shoot. And as he shoots the bullet, before it lands on the animal, he is there. That's my father. Oh, what children do is to impress one another. And you think they are children also? At a CC. That's what we struggle on. You are waiting for you to say something. You are waiting for you to impress someone. And we miss it. And Paul, in his, all his wisdom, Paul is trying to say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to pass that way. That is not the way that I'm going to go. Paul is acknowledging that I have... The, he starts by saying... That it is God who said, let there be light, not men. And that light, he has caused it to shine in us. So that the glory in us is not ours, is Christ. Then he says, no wonder he has taken that glory and placed it in another vessel. You, you see... If I died today, 
Even if Alice loves me so much, and she does, I have no doubt about it. Kwanza atakagi kuenda bila mimi, ananiya uliyala nitakuachia nani, you know? But if today I close my eyes, let me tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. She will not allow that body to be next to her. No. She will ask those that can to take that body as quickly as they can to a mortuary. Will she cry? I don't know. Because I've never died. <laughs> but even that shows you that this body, when it finishes what it's supposed to do, it becomes only dust. <laughs> Every time we are burying someone, what do we say? Dust to dust? Ash to ash? And then we do something like this. Meaning, that person, as far as God is concerned. That person has become dust. But his soul, which is so precious, has gone to the Lord. But you see what Paul is saying. Don't you worry. I could be kigugumazi. Nabda siwezi kuongea. But in this earthen vessel, God has placed in it precious, precious treasures. So you are sitting next to someone who has this precious treasure. So that is Paul. But you see, always God if God was to use impressive vessels impressive what? Vessels. Then we will praise the vessel than God. We will look at the vessel and say, oh, this wonderful vessel. But you see, God uses you. And the Bible says, today you are and tomorrow you are not. You wake up in the morning. It's like it grows up in the morning. In the evening it is cut and with us. Now that is you. So Paul is not responding with what they are saying. He is responding with who he is by the grace of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, but we have this treasure in other vessel so that the excellence of the power, whatever I do, may be of God and not of ourselves. Remember the story I gave you about the frog? Finally the frog is dead because even what was being for its help, it forgot what it is. And you know the Bible has many stories or many characters that when you hear from God and you see the character, you marvel and you wonder. For example, there is a guy in the Bible called the friend of God. Abraham. Who was, who was Abraham? A friend of God. But you know, Abraham, twice, he said Sarah was his sister. Twice. I don't know how Alice would feel if every time... Of course, she is a sister in the Lord. <laughs> but every time, especially the people who say, you look alike, and then I say, yeah, this is my sister Alice. And that is the, the way I introduce her. You know, Atafika Pali and Ambia, then we cannot live, I cannot live with my brother. <laughs> but that is the man that God says, and Abraham was a friend of God. He becomes the father of faith. Now sometimes you wonder, where was faith when he was saying, this is my sister? Where was faith when Abraham got Ishmael? Where was faith? But as far as God was concerned, in Abraham, there was this treasure, godly treasure in him, but in another vessel. So he finds himself like you and I, because you are another vessel. Another character is Moses. Moses, the human deliverer of Israel from Egypt. He had a temper. Oh, he stood by God to speak, but he hit. He had a temper. He even confesses that I cannot speak. But God says, of all people that I've ever lived, there has never been a man as humble 
as the guy with the temper. You see, when God looks at you, there is something he says about you. But God has placed in you and into me that treasure. David. God says, David is a man after my own heart. But David, in 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, we find this psalmist guilty of adultery and murder. I'm trying to speak to you to tell you, you are not written off. It doesn't matter where you are. You can turn around and tell God, I want to pursue you. I want to walk in your counsel. I want to honor you. Help me know how I can honor you. Because I need to honor God. I have to honor God. D regardless of the situation I find myself. How about Elijah? Elijah. He has confronted hundreds of false prophets in the name of God of Israel. Then doubt and fear comes upon him and he runs for his life. Because Jezebel says, Leo, Leo, ito kitwa. Olivia watendea. Nita kutendea. Nani mama. Of course, huyo akwa mama wakawaida. Si alikuwa mke wa mfaume. Najua kuna watu wanahudhagia sana. Ukikutana na Margaret wa Kenyata. Akuchape kofi uwezi kumchapa. Ah, kwa ni si wa Kenya? Si Lucy aliingia standard. Si alichapa watu. Kuna mtu alimchapa. So, musihodhi ya Jezebel, hakuwa tu, hakuwa tu mama mwingine wa kijijichedu pale kwa kona. Kwa muka wa mfaumu. But what happened to Elijah? Doubt came and fear came for his life and he had run for his life, his dear life. Yet God looks at him and is so excited about this man who has doubt and fear. But he has placed in this man with the doubt and fear treasure, precious treasure. And we can say many, many things. Actually, we, we have Peter. But, but the guy that really... I like talking about his John the Apostle. He's called the Apostle of Love. See you? And we are also told that he, he would lean on Jesus. He was very good. But John was so, he was full of jealousy. And he thought that he and his brother, one can be on the right and the other one on the left when they get to heaven. He is also known as the one who says, we can call the region, we can call heaven, and do some damages over some of these guys that are threatening you, Jesus. And yet God places in John the treasure. The treasure. Yes, through it all, we have learned to trust in Jesus. I want to talk about two, three things and then I'll, I'll be done, um, which I think are very, very helpful for us. And this is what Paul brings to us in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. He says this, We are troubled on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. I was looking at this uh, affliction thing, and affliction, if you like, is a state of pain, is a state of distress, is a state of grief. Or you would say you could be afflicted by having a continued pain in your body or mind, or sicknesses, or losses, or calamity or adversity, or persecution, affliction. And Paul is trying to tell us, number one, afflictions does not bring destruction. Oh, affliction does not bring destruction 
because of the following. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Looking at those words then in the passages, we are troubled, or it is to press hard upon. Something is pressing you to be in a narrow place. Simply put it this way, that you have been put under pressure. And all of us have been under pressure, whether it is through COVID or whatever, finances and so on. Kenya 2020, even now, some people are going through the same pressure. But it says, yes, we are not distressed. The part of being distressed or being crushed, we are not. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am not. I'm not destroyed. Perplexed is to be without resources. And some of us have had no resource at time. But even with that, I'm going to honor God. And I have and I will. Not in despair, simply not destitute of resource. That's what he's saying. I've been perplexed or without resource, but I'm not despair or I'm not without resource because God will supply all my needs according to his riches which is in glory. It was as if Paul was at a loss, but not a total loss. Are you getting the point? I have lost, but not totally. What I have lost is what people think I haven't lost yet. Like he's in a brick of defeat, but not defeated. I'm not finished yet. Persecuted, or made to run, or driven away, or haunted. But he says, not forsaken. I'm not abandoned. The Lord didn't leave him while he was on the run. A lady fell sick when she was 18 years old. And she suffered many sicknesses and afflictions. And at around 60, she even lost speech. She hated God. She had lots of things about God and she didn't want anything to do with God. At age 94, something happens in her. At that time, she cannot even talk. She cannot recognize people. She has a problem of knowing. You know the story that we have our mothers? Do you know what we are trying to check is whether they are or you know? And that will happen. You know, I've I have had to tell my mother, you know, how many you know, you know, and so on. And I know she's on the television now, Maito, you, you know. <laughs> so we get to that level. So this lady had gotten to that level that she wasn't even uh, sure and knowing people. But something happened in 94, and it came from the Word of God. She looked at the Word of God and discovered that her focus was wrong. If you focus on this body, you lose it. And this week I talked to a lady that uh, she's old and this is what we ca- she, she told me. You know, and she said in Kikuyu, can I say it in Kikuyu? That by interpretation, my sister, is that this body has reached. Where it was going, it has reached. And then she said, but my soul is well. I said, now that is. Keep your soul well because of where you are going. And for almost uh, 30, 40 minutes, we talked with this lady. She kept on, we kept on encouraging one another because this body gets to a time when she is, you're having pain here, you're having pain there. Do you know the story of some of our mothers? They say, Nime isikiri hapa. Uchungu, ikakuja chua. Tena ikakuja kwa mbogo, cha. You know this kind of... <laughs> so, so you take them to Elizabeth Kungo and the other doctors, and they normally say, this lady would need some dawa kidogo to yakutoa gas. And I'm wondering, gas? Anyway. You will get there also. Affliction not to bring us destruction. Number two, 
Affliction is not for the purpose. Affliction is for the purpose of purification. You know, and I said in the first service, you can buy some metal somewhere worth the 500 shillings. And you make out of it an ordinary horseshoe, which will be like 1,000 shillings. Iyo chuma yako umenunua, ina kutengenezea kietu cha farasi, na garama ni another 500, kwa hivyo unakuwa na ngiri moja. Or, unaweza patia mtu hiyo chuma, you can give that steel to somebody else. And then, the cost is the same, is 500 shillings, but he manufactures needles to chidano. Mingi. And the value rises from 1,000 to 3,500. He has really worked, isn't it? Oh, that was fantastic. But you can give the same, the same metal or steel to another person who turns it into springs that are put into expensive watches. The cost changes to 2.5 million. What I'm saying is this this kind of work that God is doing for us is to add value. God is adding value into you. When you started, maybe you had no value. But through the experience that you have gone, you have become valuable. Some of you are still in the experience. You will be more valuable. Some of you, when you finish, you will be pure gold. Amen. It's for purification. Amen. Then honor God in those situations and circumstances. I will honor God. Spurgeon says this, God's choice, God, God, God's choice makes chosen men. God's choice makes chosen men choice men. Mungu chaguo lake linafanya walio chaguliwa kuwa chaguo lake. We we are chosen, not in the palace, but in the furnace. In the furnace, beauty is murdered, fashion is destroyed, strength is melted, glory is consumed. Yet there is where we have eternal glory, which is for God and God alone. But all too quickly, we want to stop at the place where we say, now I'm precious, now I have this, God has done me this, and God has done me the other. You see, I was looking at uh, some, some, uh, some news. Najua kuna news igine zina tusubua kwa zimu. Siju kama simi yako inaletaka uto to news. Ati flani wa flani ya mekufa, and then tomorrow inasema haki wa mekufa. Ilikuwa ni mchezo mchezo. So, story kakuja hivi. Why nya chai married from the wealthy I don't know how true it is, but the Koinanges. So he married two Kikuyus from. When it got to that, I did not continue, and I will tell you why I didn't. I don't want to know why. <laughs> because if the person you are marrying is not because you love them and they love you, any other reason can be slavery. And I don't want to get into, into that. Kwanza wanawake watano. Atumia watano. May God help us. I want to finish by saying this. Affliction brings about transformation. Are you looking for transformation? Remember, we are saying in this year, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up. There must be a transformation, isn't it? There must be some change because none of us can mount up. But the Bible says they will renew their strength 
and their strength will be like that of the eagle and that comparison. And I also know there are many people that will not move an inch. They will not even try to jump. But may God, through whatever has happened to us over 2020, I wasn't even born, 1920. May God bring some transformation in in us. But we can only get transformed if we will honor God in the situation and the circumstance we find ourselves. Remember what Judah is being asked. Judah, what's the problem with you? Have you not heard? Have you not? Don't you know and have you not heard that the everlasting God is the creator? Have you not heard... Nobody has told you that he doesn't get weary. You haven't been told he doesn't faint. He's not like men. Young men will faint, but they that wait upon the Lord, they will be transformed. They will renew themselves. They will have new strength. They will mount up. And you know, why I like that scripture is this. I might not fly like an eagle. But it is trying to tell me my strength will be renewed in such a way that I will run with the things of God and I will not get weary doing the things of God. And I will walk serving the Lord. And I will not faint as I serve the Lord. Why? Because I'm waiting upon God. May the Lord transform us. May the Lord bring some transformation in us. A.W. Tozer says this, if God has singled you out to be a special object of his grace, you may expect him to honor you with some stricter discipline and greater suffering than less favored ones are called upon to endure. In other words, you want to please God more, then it becomes a little bit stricter for you. I'm not saying it is easier for anybody, but if you love God and you want to go to heaven, there will be some restriction. There will be things that you will not do. People will call you names. Don't answer them. Wait upon God. Let God fight battles for you. You know, I shared about this friend of mine who discovered Akona Inheritance Australia. What are you talking about? (laughs) If it is written your name, it doesn't matter where it is. And you don't do anything about it. You wait upon God. Be patient. I also told you of this girl that has inheritance in Alabama. She, She met me in Atlanta and she says, I have been given some inheritance. How it happens, and she's also a kikuyu. You kikuyus. Your inheritance. My prayer is that God, whatever is written in your name. What is your name? Can you say it to yourself? What is your name? That which is written, that name. As you wait upon the Lord and you get the transformation, may the Lord bring it to you. But remember... Remember, don't leave what is holding you. Kamachura, utadedi. I want to ask the, 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 the worship team to come and we do it one more time and then we will pray. By the way, I have a friend of mine from Carolina who has walked in. Uh, not the Carolina from Embu, not Carolina. <laughs> you see, in Embu, we have, Carol- we have Carolina in Embu, but the uh, Jake uh, Luffy is a friend of ours. Some of you know him. Uh, he will be speaking in our next service. And thank you for coming. Let's all stand up. We, we want to say through, through it all again. And then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Through it all. To trust in Jesus, I have learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I have learned 
to depend upon his word through it all through it all through it all I have learned to trust in Jesus I have learned to trust in God through I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation That my trials only come to make me strong and now I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys I even thank him for all the trials he led me through for if I never had any problem how would I know that God would solve them how would I know what my faith in God would do? Through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in God. trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I have learned to depend upon His word. If that is true about your life as it is true about my life, there could be issues that you are trusting God at this hour. You have learned to trust in Him and you are trusting in Him in this hour. And I would like to join you in praying for you and praying with you. So if you have things that you are trusting God or something you are trusting God or uh, for yourself or your, fam or your family, I would ask you to lift up your hand whether you are in the church or in the tent or at the corridor there. Just put your hand up. Our Heavenly Father, look at those hands in this auditorium today and those that are out. You are lifting up our hands because we have learned to trust in you. We have trusted in you for little things and big things, complicated things and dangerous things. We have trusted you when we have been threatened by sickness and disease and God, you have come to us so strongly and there are issues that we are trusting you for and because I might not know what your people are trusting you for and from this altar we want to declare whatever they are trusting you for may it come to happen to them so that they can know that you can solve it you are the only one who can solve it you are the only one who can remember them and dear father some of the situations that are hard May they hear you saying, my grace is sufficient. May they hear you saying, you will make it. May they hear you saying, though you are hard pressed, it will not destroy you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are trusting you for open doors, Lord God, we want to declare, you doors, be thou lifted up. So that the saints of God can not only walk through them, 
but their blessing can walk through those doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are believing for their loved ones that are unwell, we want to send the word of healing wherever their loved ones are in the name of Jesus. Those that are believing you for some miracles and financial intervention and divine connectors and people that can come and help them move from one place to another, may they locate your people in the mighty name of Jesus. In the year 2021, we know it is they that wait upon the Lord. Help us to wait. And waiting is not easy, but help us to humble ourselves and wait upon you. Because as we do, you will renew our strength. There is somebody lifting up their hands. What they need is the renewal of their strength. May you renew their strength. May you renew our strength. May you renew us. And Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We want to pray for those that are believing you for a year that they will read the word of God more. They will serve the people of God more. They will, they will pray more. They will worship you more. They will do something of the kingdom more. We pray that that will also come to them in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless your people. I speak a blessing upon what they do with their hands. May it prosper this week to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. In Jesus' name we pray. Decide, plan, you honor God.